<laughs> that is really neat. <laughs> Painting and restorating, but I think it's going to look very pretty after that. How long has it been since y'all have had a princess? Well, up to the beginning of this century. That just this century then? Yeah. Well, this house is much older, but yeah. And over there, this building, this is a uh, sort of high school for musicians. Yeah, so music is the main subject. And the daughter from Roswitha is uh, running that. She does. Yeah, it's beautiful. Did they smell? Very sweet. Really? Mm -hmm. It's kind of pretty, isn't it? Very pretty. Very nice. Did you do the date? Mm -mm. Huh. You push it for me? Is it right? Today's the 23rd? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Vol. Mm -hmm. You can take our picture. That is neat. Is that your village? No. No, all of them just the other direction. On the other side, yeah. They are I'm not good building at so many places <laughs> over here. And there are old villages and uh, half of the village is building new. This is very pretty. Yeah. Now, Andreas, if um, somebody wanted to buy some land for themselves, is it, uh, I mean, you're free to do so if you can just find it and buy it from whoever owns it? Um, or do you have to go through channels or yeah, the government well, have to approve there, it? Or? There's land you can build on, you're allowed to, and there's land you just can grow things. And so uh, <laughs> land is very special over here. <laughs> is it less expensive in East Germany than it was in in, in the West, or um, is it pretty well stabilized? And no. it, Well, Tariq will be the same way, if he's not already.
always because the thing that really put Weimar on the map and the thing, the reason that we are the cultural center of Europe for 1999 is this guy standing on the left is uh, Goethe, the, the Shakespeare of the German language, you could say, the most famous author. Standing next to him is Schiller, who is probably the second most famous of the authors. And um, this is one of the most photographed places. Of course, it looks awful right now because the theater, this is the National German National Theater, which is being renovated inside. It's also where the Weimar Republic, the Constitution was signed. For those of you who don't know what that was, between Germany never had a democracy except between the First and Second World War for a very brief period of time. And the Constitution was signed here because they couldn't um, politically, the, the communists were fighting the, the, the Nazis at the time for control of the country and they couldn't really uh, secure Berlin. And for that reason, they brought it here because Weimar was easy to cordon off and, and secure. But um, Goethe and Schiller lived the, they, they were the, the greatest writers in, in the, we call them the classical period. And they wrote from about, well, it was the period from 1750 to 1850 about. Goethe lived here for a long time, born in Frankfurt, moved here as a young man and lived all of his life here. Schiller was here most of his life, but he also lived in Vienna and some other places. And uh, really, Goethe is the one that made Weimar what Weimar did. The only remaining tour power uh, of the original walled part of Weimar, the oldest part of Weimar, is in the center and is usually um, in most of the towns in Germany um, surrounded by some sort of a fortressing wall system. This is the only tower remaining in that wall. And if you, if you walk down a little bit this way, you'll see, you'll see the rest of the remnants of the wall that's surrounding the wall. Um, 11, 12 minutes would it be We're guessing somewhere around 10, 50. Where you buy bras, Jackie? Huh? Can we buy bras there? Where? The Brasserie. Oh. Brasserie Central. <laughs> Central. <laughs> <laughs> Must be. <laughs> I've been looking for that place. It was. We're going to see the one where's Town Square now, but it's really this. Uh, I was trying to think. I've read why they moved it. I think part of the town burned, right? And then they rebuilt it somewhere else, the town square. But this was the where it originally was. This is the oldest kirche, the Jakobsky uh, kirche. The oldest church. Uh, I mean, the oldest church. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you'll see also the oldest cemetery is there. But they stopped burying people there around 200 years ago. Right. And uh, Goethe's wife, uh, Christiana. Volpius is buried there, and she, the interesting thing about that relationship, he didn't even go to her funeral. He didn't even go to her funeral. He was, you know, having affairs. The styles of architecture are just about as many that they kind of mishmash together, and that's what makes this church so unusual. Um, the foundations of the church are from the Middle Ages. Um, the main supporting walls are in the, well, roughly the 1400s. You can see the flying buttresses, which is a typical form of a Gothic church. But then you see the, the, round, the round circle uh, windows and then the arch uh, windows, which is actually the style of a much older church. A Gothic church would have pointed if it were to be matched. So in the portals, Portals are from like 16, 1650. They're around the, the time that uh, 1650 to like 1750. So around the time that Bridge and now the. She's a facade. Yeah, they play songs, but it's not, it's not like... Oh, 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 it's not like
these bells, if you look at the bells, uh, you see the bells up to the thing, those are all mice and porcelain, which is just really expensive. This is the, uh, this understatement, yeah. You know, somebody has shot one of the bells with a, some kind of bead okay. gun or something and broke it. It's broken it since we've been here. They had to replace it. I forgot how many thousands of marks to watch it replace it. It's stupid. This, the square, is really interesting and was listed in Time Magazine recently as one of the ten most beautiful squares in Europe. I mean, uh, in Germany. Really? Yeah. And it is nice, but, well, I think they were talking, it was an article about Christmas markets and stuff, you know. But uh, it's interesting, uh, this part of the square, all this whole section destroyed, about 10% of the city was destroyed. And this whole section of the square was destroyed. The rest of the square was not, it was damaged, but not destroyed. The Rot House was hardly, hardly hurt at all. And it was not rebuilt until 1987, that started, I believe. And they've rebuilt it all. Uh, everything, the outside is exactly you know, like it was, except for except the end. But there was no house on the end. I understand. What is this? What's this called? What? I don't know. Stadtschloss. Schloss is palace, and Stadt is city. Stadtschloss. 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 City palace. Schloss museum. The palace. The dumpster. Hmm. The dumpster. Oh yeah, I'm gonna zoom in on that. Authentic German dumpster. No. Come over here and tell my camera. The real what? This is real McCoy. Now we could have seen it dying. I knew it was real. You do what you do. He studied the uh, fake German architecture. I don't know if they bought it. Well, if I was going to build something, it was like a little bit of a If you had that one there, why wasn't that good? Clean cut. Yeah. 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 Gentlemen's Club. The Gentlemen's Club. So did they say it was hit during World War II? Yeah. Something like that. Mm -hmm. I said this bottle. Yes. So. Oh no. We need to have the powder. Okay. Well, Blanks, let's show you the powder Blanks bars. Yes, show you the powder bars. Because I just, all I did this morning was. <laughs> it's in German. You got it from pictures. <laughs> <laughs> how did you hey, figure out? Until we turned the bag around, we almost oh, washed that laundry <laughs> detergent. <laughs> that we, were, we were spurned away from the chlorics. <laughs> Until we found the cubes. <laughs> Not like powder See, at all. We would have had nice rain skis in our week if I didn't hear it. Heinrich Instructionist. Gosh, I can't even tell which language is German. <laughs> wow, good. Bitte geben Sie die Nerven in Fairy Tablets. In das Dorsting Fass. Come on. Very cool. Very cool. Fairy Tablets. <laughs> <laughs> this is like uh, you don't want to clean the kitchen yourself and your fairy godmother comes and cleans it for you. <laughs> okay, say it in German and it's a commercial. So I like Joey up, so I devotional. He's praying.
Hello. Hello. <laughs> Got some pe people working up here. I seem to be everywhere the camera is. <laughs> the camera loves you. This is fudge. Huh? This is fudge. Ah. She's rock fudge. She's very good, Jack. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what they do. You must walk not underneath the ladder. Ah. You must go around. You must go around. That's bad luck, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Make your luck split. Schnell, <laughs> schnell. <laughs> well, I gotta. Let me get a little view over here. Then I'm gonna take it back as soon as I finish. Oh, hello! Mm -hmm. We're getting some pictures to take home. Why don't we put that thing down and get to work? <laughs> Un momento. Rob, say hello to the camera. Hello. Hello, camera. Hello, camera. How are you? Mm -hmm. How are you doing? Video and you working? I heard. <laughs> what do you name? Going to be the sanctuary. Is one of a whole bunch of concentration camps, and we'll see in the museum a uh, map of Europe where you see where all they are, and you will be astounded at how many there were. Uh, it is one of the largest and was one of the worst. It's not, though, an extermination camp. It was built as a re-education camp, and that means that uh, wasn't it wasn't necessarily your death when you came here. In fact, three-fourths of the people who were here actually survived. Uh, during the Second World War, before and during until the Americans freed them, uh, 69,000 people were murdered here in a span of about seven years. 69,000. Um, the, uh, the brutality is absolutely unreal. And uh, I'll tell you a story uh, of just one of several examples I'll give you during the tour uh, to give you an idea of what it was like. Um, we passed, you saw me slow down, those of you who were in the van, and point to the right, that's the train stations, that's the, the, the train tracks where they stopped when most prisoners were arrived. The vast majority of them would have been brought on uh, trains in open cattle cars, winter, summer, doesn't matter. They might have gone three, four days without anything to eat or with anything to drink. There would have been, they would have arrived with uh, not just the people alive, but a lot of people dead already. Uh, Laura, our daughter, came in a year ago and said, Dad, I want to read you a story about Buchenwald. They had to study it in school, uh, almost to a fault. But um, she read about the arrival of a group of Polish, no, Jewish prisoners. And um, when the SS 
guys got there to take them and to march them down here to the camp, they were uh, surprised to find that there was a large number of children in, in the group. And they hadn't been informed ahead of time that children were going to be brought. When the Americans freed the revolt, there were a thousand children under 12 years old. Uh, you'll see some of the, the pictures, it's just appalling. Um, when they, they were angry because there were children there, because they weren't prepared for it. Children had to have special barracks and so forth. And um, so they went back, they had the children, they had marched the adults on off, had the children stand, wait in a circle, several, I don't know how many, I think it was 50 or 60 kids. And they went back and got the dogs. And they brought the dogs and turned the dogs loose on them. Oh. And uh, the children, of course, in fear, ran, and the dogs literally ripped them to shreds. And two survived. A, uh, an older kid grabbed his little brother and fell on his brother. He had the presence of mind to, to be still. And when the SS found the two living rooms, they just took their guns and beat them to death with the butts of their guns right there. An eyewitness wrote that. Uh, that's, that's just a good example of how it was every day. Every single wild uh, combination of people here, but you also had real criminals. You know, any criminal, we didn't need jails when you had 50 uh, concentration camps all around. And uh, so some of, usually it was these criminals that were taken to be uh, administrators of the camp. But that allowed something. It allowed the formation of a secret committee for let's say, the betterment of life in, in Buchenwald, in the concentration camp. And that was a group of people uh, who got together um, and tried to, in any way they could, just make the situation better. They tried to help children, for example, or um, they would uh, encourage each other or whatever they could do. And one of the things they did was they took, they stole from the munition factory some guns, and they hid those in the boarding of the floors of the barracks that you'll see. And uh, another thing they did was they, they stole or found little things that they were able to finally piece together into a secret shortwave radio. It's not possible in any other camp, because all of the other camps, the total administration was done by the SS, that meant you were always under their watchful eye. And uh, so that enabled them to do that. And they were able, when, when they realized that, that, the war, that the Allies were approaching, of course, you know, they got news from outside uh, constantly as new people were brought in. Then uh, they were, and they would have had people, what the Nazis normally did was if the, when, when the Allies came and came on a camp, all right, before they got there, before the Americans or French or British or Russians got there, and they would either just mow down a lot of or all of the people, or a good portion of them, everybody else would be shipped on to another camp. So at that time, they would have been getting shipments of people for, for a year as the Allies got closer and closer to this, this section. Americans free Turkey, free this state, and free Buchenwald. And so uh, they got word that the, the Americans were not very far off. And they used their little radio and sent an SOS they radioed and said, this is concentration camp Buchenwald. When will you be here? And the Americans, who were about an hour's drive west of Weimar, uh, today about an hour's drive, they radioed back and said, we will reach you in three days. Hold on. So what they did was, uh, they were already killing people. 20,000 20, of the prisoners were already, were already shipped off. They were already shipped away, or or were murdered before the before the uh, Americans before they got word. And, and for example, all the Jews were gone, and virtually all. They were sent to Auschwitz, where they would have certainly died. And um, so, but the others, they got their guns out and they took over the camp. They shot the SS guards that were in there, locked themselves in, and manned the guard towers to keep the SS off. And there was such a chaos going on that there was nothing they could do and the SS just left. And so all of the prisoners, the vast majority of them were still there. When the Americans came, they were shocked to see prisoners standing guard uh, on, the, on the camp itself, which meant um, 
the Americans in Buchenwald, they saw everything just like it was. And they did an extensive uh, uh, research and documentation of the whole thing. Had we not had that, we would never really have had documented all the stuff that went on in the concentration camps. And there's a book I have at home about this thick, the Buchenwald Report, that was used uh, to be used in Nuremberg in the war trials. And um, you, can, you can order it now. It actually got lost after the Nuremberg trials, and just recently, since the fall of the wall, it was rediscovered and has been published. But um, they have reports that will make your hair stand up. It is unbelievable. But they ask all of those people who are alive, and you'll see some of the films of those in the museum, uh, who were actually here telling about the experience. The, the bodies, the stacks of bodies were still there. In the other camps, they would have been pretty well uh, already disposed of before the Allies got there. The stacks of bodies were there. Uh, everything basically like it, like it was every day. Um, so, we'll walk down. Uh, today, you should know that this is maintained as a public park, and the German government uh, pays for everything. There's never uh, several of the concentration camps are being kept that way, and there's never any charge for any of them. And uh, the houses are being renovated and have been turned into a, a sort of a European youth hostel and uh, school classes and youth groups come here to study uh, uh, human rights and tolerance. And I think, I think it's a wonderful thing that they, they do that. Standing. So we saw, we were standing, we're right here now, we were standing right, right here is where we were, right in here, okay? There are six of those left. Look at how many there were. And that's how many SS were trained here, okay? These are administration buildings. All of this, this is the railroad track, and next to it was the munitions factory. That's all forest now. The camp where the prisoners were, look at how huge it was. Now, get, get an idea of this. <laughs> One barracks, these, each stripe is a barracks, okay? One barracks was built to, ha to house 47, 47 horses, okay? That was an original, the design of the, the building they used was a horse stall. It had 6,000 men oh in goodness. each of those. You have, in this section, you, they had more prisoners than the, in the entire town of Weimar, than the entire population. Imagine that. Um, it's just, it's hard to comprehend. These are the ovens. Uh, this is today the museum, the two museums. anything more than uh, 
where they brought bodies in and, and took uh, anything that was worthwhile and took the gold and silver out of the teeth. For example, when you uh, when we see the, the film at the end of the museum tour, you'll see an American soldier take a, a bucket, a huge bucket, and, and dump it out. It's fillings that have been taken out of, out of bodies. Um, these are instruments that were used to work on the bodies or the people, as it may have been the case. Um, there were no medical experimentations here like in Auschwitz, like you've read about the twins and 